I do think that the pink is such a massive part of your tone and your sound. I see people obsess over which NOS tube they should put in the V1 section of their tube amp, you know, and spend hundreds of dollars on that and like not even care about what picks are out there or what they could be using. And if you play different picks, it will sound different. I mean, it's one of the sources of your tone. It's your hands and it is the part that is making contact with the string. So when I first started playing guitar, I wanted something that was a bit more suited to uh, progressive rock and metal, and like I knew that John Petrucci used jazz threes, so that's probably why I started gravitating towards those, and having something where like you could get a lot of attack out of a pick was really, really cool. Where I started to fall out of love with the jazz three was when I started to play live, because as it turns out, I've got a fairly aggressive right hand. And what would happen is I'd start snapping low strings on my guitar. So it was kind of an adventure trying to find something that could be the middle ground between the sort of pick attack and aggressiveness that you could get with a Jazz 3, but something that I could also use live and really dig into my guitar when I have the adrenaline flowing and everything that wouldn't just destroy my, my strings or send my guitar horribly out of tune as I play a song. So the origin story of my signature flow pick, I was playing with some flow picks. I actually went to Jimmy and I was like, hey man, like I love these picks. Is there any way to make these more durable? Because I gravitate towards lighter picks because I was like, well, I still want to pick hard, but I need something that's got a little bit more flex. The trade-off with, with a pick that flexes is generally they're not as dense. The tip tends to wear down fairly quickly, which I wasn't a fan of. So the idea of like getting something that had quite a bit of flex, but would also be durable, also have a pointy tip, and have a smaller form factor, it was all very interesting to me. I basically just gave him a little wish list of things, and he was like, okay, let me see, let me see what I can get together. And we went through some prototypes, and there was some feedback back and forth, and eventually, he settled on a Delrin pick, which is a very durable material. But rather than being punched, this is injection molded. Um, so we were able to get the dimensions and the bevels and everything on this absolutely perfect. As far as like the pick itself, this is where I could sort of demonstrate like, I like to pick pretty hard. Because I think a lot of like what I do, I'm almost using the, uh, the, the right hand as a, a volume knob in the sense of like input going into the amp. So if I was to pick very soft, if I was to pick hard, so I can use my right hand to sort of, it's like an expressive tool, right? So. And like with a lot of this stuff, if I was using a very thick pick or a pick that didn't flex, or if I was setting my angle to be to where the, the pick doesn't flex when I actually strike the strings, the string will go sharp. But I could set it flat. And I could get that same sort of intensity and volume without sending the note sharp. So this is the flexibility that you have with my pick is that you have the flexibility in the pick itself and then your angle of attack will determine how much it actually flexes while you're striking the string. This is something that I use strategically both in the studio and live. So we have two versions of this pick. The live version is 0.65, it's thinner. And then the studio version is a 0.73, which is slightly thicker. It's also a darker material, which I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but the, uh, the black material has less flex and it makes it so that you get a bit more pick attack and a bit more precision on any technical parts or lead parts. So this way I get to have my cake and eat it too because I have one for each scenario. So it actually took a surprising amount of time. It was really on just the smallest little details. Um, these are all very personal things. These tolerances are all very, very small, but they do make all the difference for a guitarist. But I would rather take the time and have something. You know, I'm gonna be using this live and in the studio. I wanna have something that I've actually tested in those scenarios and I can be like, no, we're, we're good to go. This is now what I was hoping for. And that is what we have for you now.